Good evening and welcome to Artist Talk on Art on Monday, February 14th, 2022 at 7 p.m. I'm Doug Shear, president of ATOA. ATOA is the world's longest running and most prolific aesthetic panel discussion series. Founded in 1974, it's in its 48th year and has held and recorded over a thousand panels and dialogues featuring over 8,500 artists, curators, art historians, gallery directors, and collectors of all types. Tonight, as a Valentine gift to you and yours, we feature a panel discussion organized and will be moderated by NYU professor Lawrence Wheatman and featuring photographers Peter McCagg, Amy DeRocher, and Martha Lipton. This is a Zoom broadcast and is being recorded and copyrighted by Artist Talk on Art and will soon be deployed to our YouTube channel. And ultimately, it will be joining the rest of our archive at Archives of American Art of the Smithsonian. Comments made by panelists and any viewer are theirs alone and not those of ATOA. Your questions and comments are welcome toward the end of the 90 minute panel discussion via the Zoom chat function, which you'll find at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Now I'd like to introduce Lawrence Wheatman. Lawrence, Wheatman. Lawrence Wheatman was born and raised in Washington Heights, in New York did. City, and attended public schools. Mm -hmm. Although college bound, his trajectory changed upon being expelled from high school just three hours before graduation. <laughs> this was a Vietnam era and apparently the organizational skills Wheatman employed to motivate students and faculty in anti-war and civil rights demonstrations were not appreciated by all. After hitchhiking for three years throughout North America, Wheatman returned to New York City and launched Cockroach Art, a 7,000 square foot performance coffee house across from the bitter end on Bleecker Street. The art, also known as the Roach, traversed new ground in combining expression as diverse as rock and ballet, stand-up comedy and kinetic sculpture, all in the same artistic space, and featured a number of known artists at the beginnings and some at the end of their careers. Wheatman then performed with various bands of diverse musical genres in New York and Europe, and his all original rock and roll group, Madison Avenue, was produced by the late Felix Papillardi. The, the photographic experience came quite early to Wheatman in the many evenings he remembers spending with his father in a makeshift darkroom at home. He first began to embrace the power of the camera eye in video as a producer, a director, talent, and camera operator to music, fashion, and commercials. Gallery showings of his photographic work commenced in earnest in 1984. Beside his activity as an artist, Wheatman also does photo work in the more commercial aspects of the craft, including many magazine and music CD covers, and is a longtime professor of photography at New York University's School of Professional Studies. He uses this reality of multiplicity to make his choice not to specialize. The result of this is that he utilizes broad aspects of camera, film, darkroom, brush, and computer. And now let me introduce Lawrence Wheatman. Hello all, and um, since you mentioned your, your mom and dad, Doug, I want to uh, say that uh, one of the reasons, uh, actually not why I'm here at all, is it's just uh, uh, serendipitous that uh, when I first um, switched from music to photography uh, back in the early 80s, um, one of the first people I met was uh, Marsha Shear. And uh, of course, I didn't know who Doug was. I didn't even know if she had children. Uh, but uh, she was my first mentor as a, um, as a, as a graphic artist, uh, mm -hmm. photography art artist. And, um, 
it was years uh, within a few years that I first met Doug, and it was at least a decade or more after that before I made the connection between those two. Um, and um, Doug, I don't know if I ever thanked you so for giving me one of her pieces because it's been on my wall since, and I'm uh, very much in love with it. Um, so hi everybody. <laughs> uh, I have nothing written here, and uh, like uh, probably some of you, I grew up in the '60s, and uh, if you know what that means, and I since I don't mm -hmm. work from notes, I, you know, you can imagine it's a it's a it, uh, I I will be uh, 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 as uh, a bumbling idiot as I uh, can be normally, and <laughs> we've put together tonight's uh, presentation um, relatively quickly, as I understand the time frames for these things that, as they normally go is a bit longer than what we had, and I think we're, you're going to enjoy it. I love that the um, we wound up changing this from just a, a sort of studio visit kind of thing uh, into um, uh, talking about uh, surrealism, photographic surrealism, because um, uh, certainly the works uh, that are being presented tonight are uh, at least verge on that. And I've uh, also very much been uh, close to the fact that uh, you know photography is not real. Um, I mean, as soon as we went from that three-dimensional presentation of life to the two-dimensional one, we are automatically changing everything. With that said, um, of course, photography was originally um, you know, created or originally was thought to be the enemy of uh, painting, <laughs> when in fact what we, uh, what I try to do with my students, for example, is to um, teach them how to use the camera as a paintbrush. And um, certainly for uh, very many of the, the thousands of students I've had at NYU over 30 years, uh, that has worked out well. And um, just as a heads up, uh, I'm doing another one of these with, I see there's a couple of members uh, of, from, uh, who are gonna be here in two weeks on the 28th, who are, going, who are a part of the Pandemic Spring 2020 course, which was the first time uh, teaching an online course and um, on Zoom. And um, that course uh, started in uh, March, I think of uh, late March of uh, 2020 and uh, ended in, I suppose, May or maybe the first week of June in 2020. But meanwhile, we haven't stopped meeting. <laughs> we are still doing it. And uh, so in two weeks, you'll be able to see some of the works that were, have been created in these uh, couple of years from them. Um, I am going to introduce Amy because she's uh, going to be the first one up. Amy, are you here? Oh, let me just say this, um, that um, should there be some stutter in the video, uh, a good idea might be to turn off your video while we're while the presentations are showing. So uh, while the pictures are being shown on the screen, that just uh, limits uh, bandwidth uh, a little bit. And of course, if you can, if you're not speaking, to please also turn off your um, your microphones. Um, but don't turn everything off. We, we still want you to be here. Uh, Amy, where are you? There you are. I'm here. Yes. Hi. Good Introduce evening. yourself now. <laughs> uh, well, let me say this, you were my student, I believe, in the very first of the what I call the gallery uh, courses, um, the series where I mean, I, all of my classes have always uh, incorporated a, uh, a portfolio at the end of the, the semester so that they knew at the beginning that you're going to create a portfolio of your work. But the gallery uh, classes were uh, a, a, a daydream I had uh, and that got cemented when I saw the movie um, School of Rock. Uh, because I, as a musician, came across exactly the school of rock kind of, uh, of thing, which was uh, seeing very young people, 12, 14 years old, getting on stage with some of the giants of the industry and yawning while they played circles around, yawning because they're playing at two o'clock in the morning and of course they're kids. <laughs> but meanwhile, playing circles around some of the, the very greatest musicians ever. And it just seemed to me as coming out of that, that that was probably a bit more complex than it might be to teach somebody how to, how to work the camera. Oh, by the way, for the family members of Martha, this is Martha's mom's glasses. <laughs> um, and uh, so I came up with this idea that I tried uh, getting other people enrolled with in, which was to uh, have classes that culminated in a wine and cheese reception for the, for the students. 
And it, uh, I, I first went to the gallery that I was working with most of the time at uh, the Soho Photo Gallery. I was there for 35 years. And uh, they rejected the idea straight out. And then I went to my, uh, my, the head of my department and I said, uh, gee, you know, I got this idea. Oh, that'll never work. Anyway, after about 10 years of begging, I finally got the department to say, okay. And they said, but no, there'll be no uh, wine and cheese reception. There'll be nothing like that. You'll just be sh putting work on the wall and showing it to each other. I said, well, we already do that. You know, like the idea here is to, no, 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 you, you do it this way or no other way. So that class is called from beginning photographer to exhibiting artist. And I think Amy, were you in that very first one? Is that correct? The one that was- I think I might've been the second. Uh, ah, okay. I think there had been one show before us. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And, um, what happened during that show was that we were reserved a, uh, a big room in, in a building that NYU, actually the Woolworth building, which is sort of in my home base uh, since it opened in the early 2000s. And um, at the last minute, we were told, oh, gosh, we made a mistake. We double booked that room. And so they moved us into the lobby, which gave us an instant audience. And uh, in that one night, we sold more prints than got sold out of the gallery for, uh, in 30 years, in one night, in one two hour session. And not that selling work is the big deal, but it was the idea of it, just the whole idea around the concept. Of the concept. These were people that did not know us. We didn't invite anyone because we weren't allowed to. They just happened to be going in and out of the building. And um, uh, that just, uh, well, we, we had, uh, what, 45 of these or something like that, 45 of those shows over the course of the years. Of course, the pandemic put, put a, 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 a crimp on it. And uh, indeed, next in two weeks, you'll be seeing um, yeah. those folks who did it first with, uh, with the Zoom. So now, Amy, <laughs> please go ahead. OK, um, well. Uh... Let me just begin by saying, I'm not sure about surreal photos. I was going with the Valentine's Day theme. Um, so on that note, let's see how do I get this. There we go. Uh, can you see a screen that says heavenly bodies? You want to be up? Yes, we can. All right. So that's um, to, to go with the Valentine's Day theme. This is a, a few of a, my photographs of um, celestial objects and the aurora, which I'm madly in love with and I find very romantic. Um, and uh, I'll start with um, a little background um, on my, my work. I started in the 70s as a kid with a 110 camera like this one here. Um, they didn't take very good pictures of landscapes. They were good for, you know, close-up stuff, but I was interested in clouds and they became very small because it was really wide angle lens. Um, but then I learned to use a 35 millimeter film camera in high school. Um, but I was, I was um, held back by the cost of it. And um, then I bought uh, in 2000, I was in Europe and um, Amsterdam and my camera broke um, and I bought a, my first digital camera and that really just changed everything. It was so accessible. I could just shoot whatever I wanted. It had a, a zoom, which I could never afford before that. Um, and that led to buying a, a crop sensor DSLR in 2009. And then um, uh, I wanted to take him in, um, Lawrence's class at NYU in 2010 in the summer. And that really got me inspired to really dedicate myself to this. I've always enjoyed it, but to get really serious. And um, I'm now using a, a Canon 5D Mark III, which is starting to sound dated to some people, but I love it. Um, one of the groups that uh, Professor Wheatman has on Facebook is called Both Kinds of Pictures. And I take two different kinds. One is um, a sort of a, a meditation practice, really, where I walk around um, using my camera to sort of change how I see things. Uh, I think it takes my ego out of the picture and I just see through the lens and, and not my um, dusty mind. And um, it's a little bit like street photography, but I live in Maine now, so there's not a lot of streets. I take pictures of 
um, really color, form, shapes, light itself is really in my, my news at this point. Uh, at the same time, I have a day job, which is not photography. And it means if I want to make photographs, a lot of the time I do that after dark. And um, in Maine, we have some of the darkest skies in the Eastern United States. Uh, so having time after work and the camera and this love of photography, I started to take photographs of the night sky. Um, it's very different than my day-to-day -day, um, photos. It takes a lot of planning. Uh, it's very solitary. Most people are sleeping or watching TV or something and they're just shocked to know what's going on while they do that. Um, I use a number of apps to know where these things will be, the sun, moon, stars, the aurora, and the space weather, as well as the, the weather on the ground. It's a little chilly here in Maine sometimes, like today. <laughs> and, um, you have to protect your camera and your body and all that. Um, and here's some of the apps I use, if you're wondering. Um, and an intervalometer, a tripod, a camera. Um, but photo pills, the photographer's ephemera, photo transit, and a lot of scientific apps to know about what's going on. Photo pills is really quite amazing. Um, and websites that talk about uh, what's going on in the, the skies above. The first uh, major project I did um, using all of those was the 2017 total, total solar eclipse. There we go. Very exciting very technical, very difficult. Um, there's only a few seconds to get this uh, diamond ring photo, which is like the holy grail of, of eclipse photography. And um, to track it, I didn't have tracking machinery, so I had to track it manually as the moon moved in front of the sun. And um, it was really magical and just <laughs> thrilling. Um, I, was, I went down to South Carolina for this and found myself at an airport in Greenville with a whole bunch of, a few hundred other people. And we all just, it was very, a, a real communal thing, very exciting. And to, to get the photos were, it, it turned out just as well as I could have wanted. Um, in 2020, uh, one of my uh, photos of the comet Neowise was selected for Down East Magazine's best Neowise photos over Maine. That was a beautiful celestial event too. It was up in the sky for weeks really. So that wasn't quite so time-based, but it was very technically difficult. I tried a lot of different settings and um, I did a few, you know, sort of close-ups, headshots, if you will. And um, I got one over my hometown in upstate New York, Elmira. Uh, but you can see just how big it is in comparison to uh, the rest of the sky. And um, then, of course, I do a lot of photographs of the moon, um, our constant companion. I think, I don't know anyone who doesn't love the moon. And even people who aren't into the sky or nature or anything else, the moon is just... I don't know, she's Amy. Your cousin. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I think everybody loves to Wendy that's saying oh. hi, Shelly and Nathan. And uh, can someone go on mute there. Um, and then we've got um, some Milky Way photos that I've done. Um, that's another one of our constant companions. But I know when I went to Parsons um, in the 80s, I took a astronomy class and we couldn't even see the stars from the, the roof there. It was maybe three stars. Here in Maine, it's pretty easy to see with the naked eye, as well as a long exposure such as this really brings it out. And um, uh, I, I'm just so lucky to be able to see this in my yard. Um, here's another one of the Milky Way, a slightly longer exposure with fireflies um, on the ground, sort of reflecting, you know, what is above down below and um, it's another one of my favorite nighttime um, subjects. Uh, in 2021, um, last year, there was a partial eclipse over the eastern seaboard. Uh, I did get up and do that. <clears throat> and a lot of the time I use 
uh, and this intervalometer to take a series of photos and then animate them in, uh, into a, a video. So I'm going to show you a quick video for that um, and then another one at the end of my presentation, just a moment. Um, but so this, I think, just kind of shows the moon um, moving across the sun. It's, it's, uh, it, it happened over the course of uh, about an hour, but the timing, I didn't want to take up all of this presentation with this. Uh, and then, oops, I didn't need to do that, but let me go, no, stop. Let me go on the arrow key, there we go. <laughs> and then um, lastly, the thing that actually Lawrence specified that I try and show to you, uh, here in Maine, I'm at probably the lowest point in states where you can somewhat regularly see the Aurora Borealis. The first time I saw it, I thought I was seeing things. I had no, I didn't know about it. I didn't know anything about it. I moved up here a couple of years before, but on the upper right here over here, that was the first time I ever saw it. I kind of freaked out when I realized what it was, ran into my cabin, ran back out with a tripod and my camera. I didn't know what I was doing, but this actually kind of shows it. And I, that was exciting. And then over the next few years, I went and um, bought a house that happens to have a front row seat on this across from this lake here, uh, where whenever one of these apps tells me that there's a good chance of it, I'll be out there. Doesn't matter what time of day, what time of year, I will be out there and shoot it to the best of my ability. It's a tricky thing. It's different every time the settings might shift from one time to the next, but it's such a thing of beauty. I'm madly in love with that. So that's another Valentine. Uh, one night, um, a lot of the time, if there's a full moon, you can't see it very well, but there was one of the best I ever saw was in 2015 at the summer solstice, which is you know the shortest night of the year, least likely time to see this much light in the sky and a full moon. And even then the whole sky lit up with purple and green and red and blue and violet. It was just fantastic. Um, and now I'm going to show you a, a good time lapse of uh, an event, an Aurora event that happened just this past November, which I've put to music and I do hope you'll enjoy it. And <laughs> thank you. Yes, that's um, that's my presentation. Fantastic. Yes. Absolutely. Beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fabulous. Fabulous. 
And sorry to, I didn't uh, change the name of it uh, to uh, to a photorealism. That, uh, that that came up yesterday. That suddenly it was being called photorealism, and I I assumed it was based on the pictures that you and um, uh, Peter and uh, and Martha had submitted. That, uh, that, and it was okay with me. I wasn't going to argue it. <laughs> I'm happy with it. And in some ways, to us Southerners all the way down here in New York, that was uh, photorealism because we'd never see that. <laughs> It's pretty magical, yeah. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Who's got questions? Oh, I uh, there's some things in the chat here. Let me see. There's uh, one or two questions for you. Uh, the first one was, uh, how many photos did, do you have to take to to get that pic? I think that was of the um, uh, of the moon of the uh, the first uh, uh, eclipse, the full eclipse. You were talking. You first showed. I think I had. Um around 200 of the eclipse to show the full transit of the moon across the sun. Um, I was doing uh, every 30 seconds or so, I would do a, another one until we got to when it was almost total eclipse. And then I did it every second um, to get every, squeeze every little ounce of beauty out of it. <laughs> Very good. Let's see. Um, next is just a, a, a mention uh, from uh, Peggy. Oh, that first one was from Paul. Uh, it's from Peggy. Uh, the diamond ring solar eclipse is beautiful. You really nailed that one. My gosh. Really, really, really. Um, yeah, a lot of research went into doing that, but oh, what a thrill. Bia Moore says that's truly magical. Wonderful. Um, Thank you. I think that was about the, the Borealis because that was more recent. Pictures are amazing from Paul. Wow, beautiful from Roberta. Your work is really stunning. Content colors, use of negative space Rob, from Robin. Robin. Uh, Cindy says, Amy, what direction do you face? I get, yeah, that was for the Borealis. That was just a couple minutes ago. Oh, got to face north for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right into the wind. It's really, I'll have tears coming out of my eyes from the wind going oh my gosh. from the north wind here. It's It'll be pretty cold in the winter, but. Uh, I did buy goggles recently to try and preserve my eyes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Susanna uh, says, thank you. Amazing. Uh, Shelly says, that was a wow presentation. And Wendy said, that's a, a beautiful work. Well, thank Fabulous. you very much, everybody. Fabulous. Who has questions? Going once. Going twice. Oh, OK. Helene. And then. Uh, be a more question. Okay. Oh, should I ask? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, you might as well because you're you're unmuted. And uh, Helene will get to you next. You you'll unmute. Okay. So I'm wondering where the best place is to see your photos. They're absolutely stunning. I mean, yeah. I'm an art reviewer. If you ever have a show <laughs> in New England, let me know, and I will see if I can review your work. I mean, I think the work is like fabulous. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, uh, I have a website, uh, amyderosher.com. Right. I figured. And, that. Um, a Facebook page for my photography as well. And I've never really figured out Instagram. I, mm. I haven't quite pulled that off. It, I like the social aspect of Facebook. Um, and then uh, I have um, a, a few on Flickr, but I, those aren't really as up to date as I'd like. Mm. And some videos of, of all, all of my Aurora videos are on Vimeo. Mm -hmm. But there's links to that on my website. Do you ever have exhibits? I did have one um, last in 2020. <laughs> Everyone else, uh, including many people, had the, just the worst year ever. I actually had the best year of my life in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I had a solo show on the coast of Maine in friendship at the Salt Pond Studio at my Pam. Uh, my friend Pam's gallery, and um, I have the I've had the opportunity to have a piece in the main photography show every year for the last three years. So that's oh, kind great. of a, great. Uh, a good thing. Um, but I'm still actually getting myself to where I really feel like I'm ready to present. It's it's funny. I, I, this work is really starting to come together, and I'm. It's really putting words to it, and the concept, like bringing words to the feelings of it, mm -hmm. that 
you really have to speak to it, I think, to present. I took a class recently on that, and, and um, Professor Reitman has talked about a lot of the things you need to do for being an exhibitor. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't want to do it till I was ready. I'm, I do feel I'm beginning to be ready. <laughs> okay, um, I'll, I'll communicate with you through the website. But wonderful. I think you really should think about showing more because I think they're stunning, unusual and stunning. Thank you. That's quite a compliment. Thank you very much. And Amy, I'll, I'll suggest that you, um, if you wish, so you can put your um, contact information into the chat box and then everybody can just grab it from there. Good idea. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we'll get to uh, who, uh, Roberta, is that? No, who was it that was going to be speaking next? Oh, there we are, Helene. Okay, you'll have to unmute. Uh, can't hear you. Can't hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, you can try pressing and holding the space bar. That might work for you. Hmm. No, still muted. Oh, you're not, oh, you're on a phone, I see, okay. <laughs> so oh, you don't I have think, a space bar. I think we have to unmute her. Uh, the, the host maybe has to unmute her if she's see. on a phone. There I am, okay. Yay, oh, so okay. Sorry about Yay. that. Hello. <laughs> No Hi it's normal. Don't get anybody else. Don't get frazzled. The technology is not No, I'm used to doing perfect. it on my iPad where I have everything, but uh, uh, somehow I can, I'm not connecting lately with that. So I'm using my iPhone and it's a different ball game. So I'm yeah. sorry. No anyway, uh, I was so impressed with the beautiful photography and wonders that you're uh, revealing to us. Uh, with the Aurora Borealis series, uh, were you recording it as a, a video or were you doing it as uh, stills that you put together? These are stills that I put together. They're long exposures in general of about 20 seconds that I then put together in Adobe Premiere and um, maybe add titles and music and so on. Oh, it's beautiful, just beautiful. So uh, if you would enter it into uh, some form, uh, some exhibit format, would you consider it a film or would you consider it, would you enter as stills or you have the option of both? I think I'd probably try both. They, they make very nice still photos. Oh, they're um, gorgeous. But I, I love how they come alive. And um, one of the things I'm starting to think about is these NFTs, these digital art pieces that are traded with blockchain stuff, which I don't really understand yet, but I think these videos <laughs> might be a good candidate for that. Mm -hmm. um, but I have, I have had um, an exhibit where I showed uh, videos on a monitor in a room with still photos on the wall. So kind of a little both. Fabulous work. I'll okay. make note of the fact that uh, motion pictures are a bunch of stills stuck together. So it's not. <laughs> <laughs> They're not oh, as the still as these, though. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, let me uh, just suggest, by the way, if you uh, want to speak, you can also use the reactions uh, button. Uh, there's a, a hand raise uh, in there, as well as a few mm -hmm. other options, so that in case anybody okay. else needs, wants to speak, then uh, I think that might make it easier. We have some more notes. I'll just go through these rather, very quickly. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go backwards. Um, uh, Susan says, I live six months of the year in the Catskill Mountains and see our ma magnificent sky each eyeing each evening, I guess. Um, you have captured what I feel each night gazing up at the sky. How fantastic. Thanks. Uh, Jean says, Instagram is a great platform for selling your artwork. Uh, uh, Susan, again, says, fantastic. Cindy, uh, of course, in Maine, the, in Maine, the north wind makes you pay for your, the beauty. <laughs> <laughs> LOL, we love Maine. Uh, and uh, Bia Moore said, well, what's the best way to see your work? And I think I've read the rest of those. Yes. Any more oh. questions for Amy? Okay. Peter, where are you? 
Peter. I'm here. Right. Okay, so let me introduce you. There I am. First of all, Amy was coming from Maine. You're coming from? Central Valley in California. There we go. Hi. You know, it's the commuting on this Zoom thing is pretty easy. <laughs> Peter, I uh, was also a student, but he was also a colleague. And uh, I don't recall that. I, 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 I hope you got my class for free as, as a result of teaching in the same school. <laughs> is that correct? So. Okay. Maybe so, yeah. <laughs> and how long ago were you there? I think it was 2014 spring. There we go. Okay. Uh, so go ahead, uh, 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 Peter. I, uh, you, I and you've been you left. Let me see. I, uh, you left New York. I think right after that, and wound up going west, but not to California. Right. Yeah. No, I spent much of my life in uh, working and living in Japan. Uh, and a couple of different times uh, and got re retired just before the pandemic began and my furniture and belongings made it safely to California happily. But uh, yeah, I, I spent most of my life living and working in, in Tokyo. And uh, I, I, I want to say to Amy, holy cow, uh, mm -hmm. what an act to follow. And, <laughs> and uh, you talk about coming back to earth. That's where we're headed, guys. Okay. Uh, I, I, I um, have talked about a lot of things in my life, but not really ever much about the pictures I take. Uh, I was trained as a linguist. Um, and uh, I developed an interest in, in cognitive linguistics, where you, you look into the relationships between a language and thought and understanding. And uh, it's, so I bring sort of a relational perspective to what I have to say about the, the pictures that I, I hope that I'll be able to share with you in just a second. And I, um, Lawrence, you kind of touched on this earlier in, when you were giving some introductory marks, but I, I see the photograph as a, um, as a representation of something else. And in that sense, it's like a word or a sentence uh, and it both reflects some external reality or situation and to some extent represents uh, an internal reality too of the person who's speaking or who took the, the photograph. It's the, 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 photo, the photographer's text is the, the image uh, that uh, he or she's created. Uh, I hope the ones that we're gonna look at will invite you to uh, in for a closer look. I like uh, Amy only, I went in a very different direction. Uh, we were aware that today is Valentine's Day and I think that uh, influenced my selection of images some more towards the more luridly saturated things that I've, I've done. Um, I have to, I, I, I can't stress enough uh, what a, what an amateur I am and that um, uh, I hope that what I have to say will be of interest to those of you who I suspect may be um, a lifelong artists and, and people really into the, the, uh, the dialogue that you're having. I almost feel a little bit like a, 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 an intruder, but again, Lawrence, thank you for inviting me. I'm going to stop you for a second because I have to inter interject here. I, in my my belief is that pretty much all humans, like 99.9 percent, .9 are artists. And as a matter yeah. of fact, that there's a good portion of the animal population that have also proven themselves to be artists. Uh, so you don't you're you're an artist whether you're <laughs> practicing on a regular basis or not. If uh, any fo every forward motion that humanity has ever made was due to art, I strongly believe that. I talk about it all the time. Um, for those, who, uh, the, the one that always comes to my mind first is one that some of you probably already heard me say, which is a, a famous quote from uh, uh, Albert, uh, Albert Einstein late in life. A young uh, uh, interviewer uh, uh, asked him the interviewed him and asked him the question, but how did you come up with that big one? You know that E equals M C square one. He says, that one, that one was easy. I was playing my violin and there it was. <laughs> so it's the art that makes our minds turn to science. And uh, an ex another example of that is where we park our uh, communication satellites is called the Clark Belt, named after Arthur C. Clark. Because after years of 
with NASA trying to figure out how to how to make a, a, a put together a communication system, a satellite based communication system, somebody said, well, maybe we should look at what Arthur Clarke said in that book that he wrote several years ago. What's that? They're putting him up at two, I think it was 20,800 miles, or maybe it's 10,800 miles. He figured it out. And that's exactly where we park our satellites. It was art that made that happen. Um, one more quick example of that. I'm sorry to take your time, but I just think it's very important to cover this stuff. I live right next to Penn Station, one block away, and they're going to, they're talking about tearing down all of the buildings around here so as to expand the, uh, the, the West Side Yards, uh, the Hudson Yards, as, as it's now called. And I've been living in this space for 40 two and a half years. I was down the block for four. I've been living my whole life walking distance from that place we now call Hudson Yards. And for up until just a few years ago, that was the least valuable land on Manhattan Island. Nobody wanted anything to do with it. There's a funny history behind that. It was had to do with corruption and uh, had to do with uh, the, uh, the post-World War II era where the, the, the saying was, if, uh, if it's good for GM, then it's good for America. And to turn, you know, just uh, uh, disrupting all public transit to promote everybody by a car. Um, and that land just lay fallow for 50 years. Nothing was happening on it except for these giant factories were falling down because they had been you know, not used, not taken care of. Um, and uh, then uh, it was artists, two artists who came up with the idea of, oh, and they tried to tear down the, uh, uh, the, the um, the park, the uh, High Line Park, uh, what's now called the High Line Park was just called the High Line, which was is a train line. They tried for many years, 30, 40 years to tear it down because nobody would do anything with that ugly thing there. And uh, it was two artists uh, that didn't know each other that both came up with the same idea at the same time, which was to turn it into an art project, turn the High Line into an art project. And that within three years turned the most fallow land on Manhattan Island into the most valuable land in the world, <laughs> an art project. So I'll stop there. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I, I just share my screen. That's the, the, yep. the ticket. Yep, yeah, you, have the, you, what's, uh, you have it open already on the, wherever it is? Yeah, yes. Okay, then it should be easy. You're, you're gonna see a few windows, so hopefully not too many. And one of them is the right one. Take your time in picking the right one. Uh, it's going to ask me to let this be okay. Is it? It's okay with me. Uh, hmm. Hmm. While you're doing that, there's a couple of uh, chat things here, oh, yeah, two no. of them. Um, let's see. It's not. Uh, it's just uh, one from Lee Robbins. Hi, Lee. Uh, that uh, he liked the counterpoint of lightning bu lighting bugs and stars, lightning bugs and stars. And um, yeah, and uh, Amy, uh, that was to, uh, and Amy responded, thank you, Lee. That's all. Okay. I stalled you a little bit. You okay? I, I, I'm not having any success, I'm afraid. And um, when it says share, I get a, um, a basic advance in files. And um, Mac or PC? I'm on a Mac, I'm sorry. Okay. Know, I, I'm gonna break in here and recommend. Yes. There we go, and recommend. And perhaps we go uh, to the next artist oh. and give you some time to work it out. You probably will work it out. What do you think, Lawrence? Okay, let's see if I've got this. I wasn't counting on this happening at all. Yeah, I know. I said we, that's okay. It's normal. okay because it, this is absolutely positively normal. Absolutely. So it's no big deal whatsoever. We're all patient with it. We totally understand. Uh, this is not the first time. <laughs> exactly. It, Whoops. You know what? I have your work up. I bet it's not in order, though. No, it's not. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I, I prepared yours. I didn't prepare Martha's. Yep. Oh, I think I can do that though. I'll give you another, it gives you another minute anyway. Um, it's all right. Don't chill. I mean, don't, 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 don't freak out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed, but I don't, I don't know what else I can do. That, there's a triangle with an exclamation point in the middle of it, and otherwise a blue. I can do desktop one or photos unknown, or, but it, nothing. When I do that, it takes me to my settings and says, "Let it happen," and I let it happen, and it doesn't happen. Okay. Hmm. Well, in that case, we are going to go on to Martha. All right, I, I have to introduce you, Martha. I'm, I'm still working on uh, putting this together. And guess what? They're, they're out of order. <laughs> I think I can fix that right away, though. Yes, I did. OK, uh, so let me come back here and let me introduce you to, uh, to Martha. Uh, Martha, I first met 32 years ago, something like that. And uh, we immediately fell into bed. And uh, <laughs> almost, and uh, we had a, a wonderful, uh, if, uh, I mean, I was messed up, so I just came out of something. I don't have to talk about that, but she was wonderful to me. And something about Martha that I immediately appreciated was how her walls were covered with some of the most fantastic art I've ever seen. And then to learn that much of it was hers. And uh, uh, much of it was, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, it was pencil, it was colored pencil, it was, it was uh, uh, I think there was one that was chalk, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it, you, you did a lot of different work. And then over time, I got to see some of her, the commercial work that she uh, had done, um, which was uh, advertising that we'd all seen in the newspapers on a very regular basis that apparently she never got paid for. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, uh, and that sort of thing. And it, uh, I never. Oh, and plus, I wanted something. I wanted was going to do tonight was to, while we were playing her slideshow, was to play some of her music because she's also she denies it every single time I say this. So don't. So now you don't have to spend, waste any time telling everybody that you're going to deny that. Uh, she is one of the most uh, fluid and prolific musicians I've met. Um, her guitar playing, her piano playing. She says, oh, I'm so rusty after doing things that on the instrument that uh, the hundreds of musicians I've worked with couldn't do after practicing for years after year after year. And, you know, she sits down after not touching an instrument three, four years and blows my mind. Uh, so she's multi-talented and um, obviously now she's doing photography. I will turn it over to you to defend yourself so what do i do oh just talk just uh, introduce yourself oh um i thought i would see myself on the on the thing i see your face in the middle i don't sorry see that's okay <laughs> um hi everybody thank you for coming to uh view my pictures i actually um haven't really exhibited photography in a very long time my background was um language and art i loved to do that because i loved running away to europe and um, I didn't have a great camera then. Actually, it's funny in my little bio, it said that um, I actually avoided photography much in the way that Amy did because I was afraid that if I got involved in photography, I would just go broke because I would just spend, I would fall in love with it and, and I would just go bankrupt. And uh, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of what happened. So I put it off until my last semester in college up in Binghamton. And of course I became so in love with this that the next semester I actually was a TA teaching in the dark room because I pretty much lived in the in the dark room. And my cousin who's here, my cousin Shelly, is the one that was kind enough to drop the Pentax in my lap, which was how I came upon getting the uh, a camera. And um, I just, they used to call me Click, actually, uh, when I was in college, which was sort of funny, because I was just constantly with the, with the camera. And I I just loved capturing, you know, pictures and just everywhere I went, you know, with the Nikon and the and the Pentax and all these lenses and filters. And I mean, it was a, it was a very heavy, you know, endeavor financially as well as, uh, you know, physically. And to make a long story short, the photography that I'm going to show you tonight is really all done with my cell phone because I love the immediacy of the cell. It's small. Even when I travel overseas, Lawrence has always encouraged me to take another camera with me. And I'm just like, I take some pictures with the camera, but I just love the cell phone. It's just so it's just very 
mobile and it's just really wonderful. And while I can't do a lot of the very detailed and you know pictures that I used to take with the cameras, with the lenses, with the portrait lens, I mean, all these beautiful things where the detail was so fine, I have to relinquish the, the ability to know that I'm not gonna be able to you know shoot that beautiful moon that, that Amy is able to do with all of her wonderful equipment. And her, her work is just exquisite. I mean, who doesn't dream about the stars and the, you know, and the planets and everything like that? And it's great, but clearly it's not gonna work with my little cell phone. Um, again, I love, I live right by Central Park and it's right out my door. And I have been in love with the park for a very long time. I've actually lived in my apartment as a good New Yorker for 42 years. Mm -hmm. I got my apartment um, when I was working at the Village Voice as a designer, uh, fresh out of college. Uh, when they hired me, I didn't know an agate from a pica, but the marketing director liked the little doodles in my portfolio. And he said, I'm gonna hire you. And the, the funny thing was the first day that I worked was day that the thing was closing and I didn't even know the difference of an agate and a pica because I was just, you know, making doodles with my pen and ink. And I was very good at drawing, but I didn't know very much about graphic design. And the design that I did in college, people just would give me a piece of paper and they say, here, do whatever you want. And then they would publish it, you know, which was really lovely. But I, I had very few restrictions, which was lovely because I clearly have an authority problem, which all the members of my family that are here visiting will probably attest to that. <laughs> But being an artist is a good thing. So um, anyway, so getting out of uh, getting out of college, and I got this job as a as a graphic designer, and uh, you know doing advertising and promotion for the Village Voice. Found my apartment. My mother had a cow when I moved here because it was north of Ninety Sixth Street in the late seventies, and it was kind of a dangerous area to be in. And but I said, you know, I walked into the apartment on the seventeenth floor facing south. I walked to the end of the apartment looked out on the terrace, looked to the left, there was the Guggenheim Museum. I said, I don't care if this is hell, this is where I wanna live. The Guggenheim Museum is actually one of my most favorite buildings in the entire world. And I get to look at it every day and I'm a lucky person. Anyway, so um, what I'm gonna share with you today, um, I actually have two series that I'm gonna share with you. The first one basically is a love letter to Central Park. And, um, Lawrence was kind enough to, I, I worked with a, a lovely friend of mine, Terry Amazine, who was a magazine editor. And we picked out, you know, like 20 pictures and I submitted this to Lawrence and I said, here, this is what it is. But here are some other ones that I think you might like. And he goes, I can't believe this. So he completely changed the whole thing and added a whole lot more. So he is, is enabling me to share even more of my love for Central Park with all of you today. So um, I guess that that's, and this is all shot with my LG camera. I haven't even graduated to the iPhone, which I plan to do, but I love the LG. It's really, um, it's not an iPhone clearly. And the reason I have that, even though all my, everything else I have is Mac. Um, way back when, when I got my first smartphone, I just didn't want to drop $800 in 2012 on a cell phone. It was just hard for me to sort of, you know, deal with that whole thing. So the guy said, you know, you don't know how to use a cell phone. Why don't you try this LG? It's really kind of great. So I got an LG and I love it. It's really, really wonderful. And I will eventually graduate to the um, iPhone. But that being said, I'd love to just share with you my love letter to Central Park. And Lawrence, you're, you're, you're driving here. So good luck. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this. Enjoy the show. I hope. <laughs> Okay, full screen. Oops, we're in the wrong place. How did we get in the wrong place? Wait a minute. You're supposed to be in New York. There we go. Nope, New York is the first one. Yep, there we go. Here we go, everybody. This was actually published in the um, Central Park Conservancy um, calendar. Okay. Well, we'll we'll let it run, and uh, then we'll okay. come back if we if we want to. So so enjoy it, enjoy the ride, everybody. It's three minutes. We can we can gap while we're while we're doing this. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can just this is my view from my terrace that I get to wake up to every morning. It's supposed to just run. What's going on? This is, of course, the reservoir. All right, I'm doing it manually. Okay. This is one of my favorite pictures in the world. This is a pond near my house, my apartment. My neighbors who live in the building will also appreciate this because this is what we get to live with all the time, every day. Mm. Fall is one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite seasons. So, and you'll notice the kiss, the people kissing in the lower right-hand corner of this uh, photograph. 
And here we have the, the picture that looks like a watercolor, very uh, impressionistic. And who doesn't love flowers? This is one of my favorite pictures. It, does, it, it looks like a photorealistic thing. I used to be a photorealist illustrator, by the way. So it was something I was very good at, something I hated doing, but I needed to do that. <laughs> so many things I'm learning about you tonight. And you, you always knew about that, so. Not that you hated it. Well, I, you know, it's more fun to draw a pair of shoes after they've had a long life and, you know, they've been worn out as opposed to when they have no air and they're too perfect, mm. so. Gotcha. Now, I have to say, when Martha first was showing me these pictures, I just wasn't getting it, just wasn't getting it. And then it was really last night when we were putting this together. And after I'd uh, found out that they uh, changed the name of this, this program to, from, uh, to uh, photorealism, I thought, oh, wow, this fits so well. <laughs> I mean, if you know some of the work of photorealist paintings, you realize, you know, you realize that this is what they're, what they're fabricating, but, you know, why not just take a photograph, I think. So that's just because I'm biased, because I used to have to make pictures that looked like photographs, and it was just like ridiculous, so. I love this one too, the fish that got away. And again, this is all, you know, within walking distance of my apartment in Manhattan on the upper west side. I should add too that uh, most of these pictures were taken within the last 13 months with just a couple of them being uh, slightly older. Um, and uh, Martha gave me the four or 500 pictures to, as alternates in case there was any in the, in the 20 that she gave me. To, <laughs> and once I started looking at these things, it, was, it made it so, I mean, yeah, there were some that were very similar, so that made it easy, theoretically, to pick one or the other, but I still wasn't be able to pick one or the other because they would be both beautiful. So just bringing it down to these 30 or so uh, was, was, was quite the task. Still recovering. <laughs> this is one of my favorite trees in the world. I even gave it a name. This is Marilyn, and I visit her very frequently. It's just one of the most lyrical, beautiful, trees near my house so and this was to make everybody laugh because who doesn't want to laugh at snow people so i just love this picture this was shot very recently in the first snow with the snow still falling i see yeah and this is a piece i just love when I first saw this, I thought, well, why is she even showing this to me? It's a, it's, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. I didn't realize it was ice on the, on the, on the lake or the pond and, uh, and was, the, the mess that I was, thought was, was garbage strewn about was snowballs that hit the ice and burst. Then all of a sudden it wasn't a mess. <laughs> This was very recent. I just, today's my birthday. So I'm clearly, I'm a, I'm a winter baby. This one, I just mm. posted on my Facebook page. It's just, it looked like cotton balls all over the place. Mm. And it. the only place I actually show my photographs now other than here is um, on Facebook. And uh, uh, this picture was taken yesterday, correct? This was like the, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, <laughs> so, <laughs> it was kind of good having have being able to assemble this show for you uh, very recently, you know, at the last minute. Because yeah, last night. <laughs> I, I, really, I really got to show you stuff that I, I just shot. So anyway. and this is this is meant to be a segue into the next. This series. is going to now introduce the next one. You, you can talk while I do this. While, while I do this. Well, oh, does anybody have questions for me or? Thank you for the birthday uh, greetings. Here. Do, you, do you do much manipulation after you take the photo? Some of the first ones looked with the edges very, very sharp. Hard to believe a camera got at that. Do you work uh, in you know, Photoshop? Um, no, I haven't gotten this. Whatever I'm doing is on my cheap little, I have an LG Stylo 4 now. And whatever manipulations I do, I do on my phone 
and that's really it. I don't know if 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 um, Lawrence has done anything to any of these pictures, but um, so we, you what? change them afterwards. Do you work with the color, the contrast? It's a little bit, a little bit. But I'm just saying is that I'm limited by the by the uh, you know the limitations of of an LG. Well, how many megapixels are the pictures that you're taking? Well, Lawrence will have to answer that. Uh, about eight, I believe. Megabytes or? Yes. Well, eight, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of detail for eight megabytes. No, that's, uh, you know, me the whole megabyte thing, the, the, the number one thing that megabyte count does for cameras is to sell them nothing else I, because it, you go from eight uh, eight megabytes to 16 megabytes you're thinking oh it's twice as big well it's twice as many megabytes but that only gives you 20 percent more picture so it's not a dra dra it's not as dramatic as you might think to to double megabytes um, thanks for the education <laughs> okay i got lots of education for you okay now let's see yeah. And let's. Um, oh, are you still seeing? Are you seeing? What are you seeing now? Just a chat box. Nothing. Ah, gotcha. Okay. So I have to stop share and then start share again. So should I talk about what this next series is? For yeah, us? you might as well. Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Um, this is completely another departure. I. Uh, the next series is actually, I, I actually hate, hate selfies. I just, I'm so against, I mean, people want to take pictures with me and it's like, please, you know, forget about it. I like to be behind the camera. I don't want to be, you know, the subject of the camera, but I have discovered a way that I really love selfies now. There's an incredible interactive mirror, actually four mirrors in an office building that I, where I visit uh, a doctor uh, once a week. And I have developed this passion for taking pictures of myself in front of these crazy interactive mirrors that completely fracture and, and turn me into some of the most amazingly crazy, beautiful, ugly things that you can, they look like paintings. Um, these mirrors were actually developed by a guy named Danny Rosen, who's a teacher at Tisch at NYU. If you'll just give me a second, he's an artist, educator and developed working in an area of interactive digital art. As an interactive artist, Rosen creates installations and sculptures that have the unique ability to change and respond to the presence and point of view of the viewer. In many cases, the viewer becomes the contents of the piece, and in others, the viewer is invited to take an active role in the creation of the piece. Basically, what I've done is I've turned myself, and I'm not saying that I'm a Cindy Sherman, but I am the subject matter of all of these crazy pictures that I'm going to now show you. Um, again, I provided, I guess, about 20 of them, and then Lawrence added like another 20 or 30 or whatever, because he was like, how am I supposed to choose, you know, among these things? Because they're just really crazy. So these are not going to look like photographs to you. These are going to, I mean, these are, these are really very crazy selfies. And I call these my mirror selfies. I hope you enjoy them. I certainly enjoy taking them. So. Is it, are you seeing them now? I, I nope. been, yeah, it's weird. Okay. We are not seeing anything. Yeah, gotcha. Let me yeah. park this one. And so I hope there. he can do this. <laughs> yeah, really. It, it was working beautiful. just a moment ago. And his name is Gary Rosen. Is that what you said? Danny Rosen. Okay, this Danny is the Rosen. first one, right? Broadway. Oh, you got it. Oh, fabulous. Yep. Okay. Yep. So this is the only horizontal that I took. All the one, all the rest of them are vertical. And here we go. Thank okay. you. I actually see your tab bar on my screen now. Yeah, no, I'm, but it's, it, 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 for some reason, it's not doing the uh, the uh, the show, uh, the, the slideshow. There. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and this goes through, I started doing these in, the, in July of last year. This is from outside looking into the building. <clears throat> but to me, these were instant paintings. 
<clears throat> Something about selfies that I was surprised about. Um, it's, uh, let's see, mid eighties, I uh, was uh, with a wonderful woman who was uh, crazy, but one of the most talented, another one of the more talented people I ever met. And uh, she was a, a dancer and a choreographer and, 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 a, and a singer and a writer and a piano player. I mean, she did everything. And she wrote this play and uh, she needed uh, promo pictures. And we came up with a concept and uh, one of her dancers and her were going to be posing in, in this thing. And um, uh, to make a long story short, uh, 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 the weather and uh, just schedule kept messing with us. And at some point, uh, I wound up being the uh, the, the person, the, the second person in, in, with her in in the pictures, using the self timer. First time in my life ever using the self timer. First time ever doing self portraits. And uh, pictures from the surprise to me was that pictures from that series wound up being purchased by four museums. <laughs> Uh, and um, it, it suddenly gave me the, uh, I, I suddenly was aware of uh, the, and I wasn't marketing them as self-portraits at first, but once I did, that drove the price up like crazy. The first ones, as a matter of fact, if, uh, were, uh, were picked by uh, uh, um, Christo and Jean-Claude uh, and went into the, the Merriman collection and uh, uh, Nancy Merriman, after her husband passed, uh, took over the collection and was running it uh, out of a museum in Menlo Park. Um, and um, uh, it was such a surprise to me that, uh, I mean, yeah, for some reason, so self-portraiture is a powerful medium. And asking Martha, how did you do this? How did you do this? I was, I just got confused every time until last night. I, you know, it, it finally coalesced into what's happening here. And so Martha gave me 19 of these to show and gave me another, I think it was two or 300 in the, in the folder. And so that's well, I gave, I gave you the whole mirror selfie folder. That's what I did. Oh, that's what it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was all the ones I shot. Ah, I wasn't aware of that. In case there was anything else that you were inspired to add. So you can actually see part of the process here. Things haven't settled. But I mean, it's so much fun, the different kinds of outfits I wear and, you know, whether I'm, you know, it's winter or, you know, if I put the, the scarf over my head or, I mean, it's, I, I, I lose the, the identity of myself and I just become sort of a you know, mannequin here and it's fun. I was really curious about this. I mean, I, I, you know, now that we have digital photography and the capability to use computers to alter the, the photographs, it's like, oh, that's fake. You're altering the, wait, 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 wait. I used to be in the dark room. We were doing it there too. <laughs> I mean, you just use a different uh, developer and you've got a different picture. You you expose it darker and it's more forbearing. You make it lighter and it's it's ethereal. Uh, you know, we're always manipulating uh, manipulating our our work, uh, even when it's commercial for, for commercial purpose. So, uh, utilizing a computer or software or what have you to. Uh, do these is just another tool in the toolbox. This picture, the the the, the picture hasn't settled in it. That's why I wanted to show uh, you. Yeah, time. right. Let, let me go back to the last one. Yeah. Uh, gosh, is it gonna let me do one? Yes. So yes. What happens I've... is it? I'm sorry. Go, on. go ahead. Explain. No, no. I mean, there there are four mirrors in this building. One is facing outside and often is not functional, but there are three in the interior, and. Um, I would get into a lot of trouble actually if I tell you where these are, but you can certainly communicate <laughs> with Daniel Rosen. And I'm, I'm just saying that the guy, the guy that um, you know is at the front desk. If it suddenly became you know a, a pack of people coming in there, I mean it's kind of funny because um, I, I visit I visit my my chiropractor actually. I visit him once a week, and I'm so excited because not only is he making me feel better, but on my way out of the place, I get to play with these mirrors, and then I go home and I get to look at all these pictures, and it's just so much fun. So, I mean. Sometimes some of the mirrors aren't working, and there's also exhibitions of art in this in this lobby. And um, just recently, um, what happens is that the, the, the mirror is a is a is a is a large frame. I mean, I guess it's I don't know, you know, seven feet by three feet or something each one. And there's a little camera in the left on on the on the panel on the on the frame on one side of the of this mirror of this uh, screen. 
an artist lately was, uh, they changed the art uh, exhibit and, and someone is now hanging these sort of metal sculptures in front of there. And I was thinking, God, that's, you know, that's going to really screw up all of my ability to take, you know, to take pictures of myself. And, <laughs> and Jimmy, the guy at the front desk goes, you know something, you've been taking pictures here for months. You got to learn how to share. So that inspired me. And I thought, you know something, I'm going to make this like wire sculpture that's in my way become part of my picture. And you actually saw some of those recently with the white sort of, you know, sort of a snaky thing in front of my face. That's me, you know, behind the sculpture because they go, well, don't touch the art. And I was like, come on, I'm an artist. I'm not going to screw up your art. But, you know, you, you've <laughs> caused me to, to, to learn how to make the most of, of something that's changed the, the availability that I mean, the complete availability of this amazing sort of little toy that I have to play with and that I can enjoy and, and, and take all these incredible portraits. So, you know, it's, um, it, uh, I'm really not manipulating anything. I mean, I'm not even like changing the color because what happens is you go in front of this mirror and you know in front of the in front of the uh, camera, this little tiny camera, and you and you sort of wait for the for the for all the configurations to kind of settle, and then you can take a picture. And every time you move in one way or another, you know the the the, the all this all this material is going to change. I really can't explain the um, the mechanics of this whole thing because I'm so not I'm not. You know, I mean, to me, to me, it's like a, a wonderful palette that's kind of just, you know, sort of morphing in front of me. If you really want more in, information about him, the guy's name is Daniel Rosen. R -O -Z -I -N. And Daniel, are you here? I invited him last night. I don't know if he got the message. I didn't, I don't think he uh, responded right. to me, but. Anyway, Daniel Rosen is the artist and you can really look into see a lot of his work because I mean, um, he has his own website, but he works at Tisch at NYU and um he on his website you'll be able to get a lot of the particulars about how this works and what he does and and, and all the different uses of what he's doing okay i'm going to stop you martha because okay. we uh we, we have uh, okay. more than 30 comments to you okay uh, i'm going to try to go through them as, as quick as i can you want to just go to the last picture because you're on the second to last picture okay uh, if i can okay or if you can't don't worry about it mm. But anyway, I mean, this is such a departure from what I normally do, and, and it's great because I mean, so this is actually me standing in front of the, the white line, the, the sort of chalky stuff in front of me is the is the sculpture that's in front of me that's that's preventing me from get to the to, from getting really close <laughs> to the mirror. But I made it work for me, and in fact, there are a lot of pictures in this in this um, collection that were really like just shot, you know, Tuesday pretty much okay and um, uh, so i'm going to stop oh, you because uh, we got so many i have so much to read to you uh paul okay. uh, i this uh, 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 I, I believe this is paul is a, is a former student of mine and he's saying what's the best camera the one in your hands which is exactly yeah exactly um and uh, peggy says the clarity and composition is beautiful i would uh, not think you're in the city i just love it uh, susan says what a great eye wow each and every one uh, Peggy says, I also do vertical landscapes. <laughs> it's, it's not so common. Uh, Amy says, ooh, I love the ice ones. Uh -huh. uh, of course, because Amy is, is, is an ice specialist. Amy has hundreds of uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful pictures of, of, of different types of ice that she finds right. around her in, in, in Maine. Been doing that for years. It, it's, it's fascinating. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Robin says, really beautiful shots. Helps me appreciate my city more. I like the image of the person in the background of the Maryland shot. Uh, happy birthday, uh, Natalie and Marana say, both thank say. Uh, Susan says, thank you and happy birthday, Susanna. Um, uh, Cindy says, happy birthday. I hope you made your day special. I really appreciate your imagery. This is the best present I could ever get. <laughs> really. Uh, Jean says, uh, happy birthday. Amy, uh, absolutely lovely. The park has it all. Alan says, wonderful photos. Uh, Norma says, did you say you use an LG camera? Uh, Wendy says the pictures were great. Love them all. Peggy says the clarity and composition is beautiful. Uh, Lee Robbins says, says I really like the flashes of orange leaves across the blue pond reflected against the leaflet, uh, leaflet foliage from the other side. Uh, yes, paintings, very interesting and also immediate, uh, Peggy. Oh uh, gosh, what was your process and app? I, I think we covered that because you're you're just using what's available inside the LG. That's right, that's exactly. Not, not separate apps, just what, this, this is, there. This is, there are no there are no special apps. Gotcha. Jacqueline says, "Where is this location?" The, well, it was all Central Park. I, oh no, you were probably asking about right, the, the Midtown. The I mirror. Think it's somewhere in Midtown. Right. <laughs> we're not going to tell you because there's a fear here. Uh, Doug says, "What is the Fractal app?" 
of Danny or of your LG camera. Ah, uh, the, yeah, so the, I'll, I can answer that for him. Uh, uh, it's, it's actually part of the sculpture that makes the image. The uh, applic uh, the uh, uh, so this uh, the uh, teacher the, uh, the colleague of mine I didn't find out exactly realize that till last night uh, is um, uh, he he's a uh, I think mostly a software guy and he's create creates artwork based on his software and that's that's what's happening here uh, at least half of it uh, and what kind of mirror is that is Norma asks. Uh, uh, Susan says haunting and unique. Peggy says they're fabulous. Norma says this is only a reflection or a computer altered. It's both, I guess we can say. Um, I'm um, standing in front of I'm standing in front of the mirror. I wait till it sort of settles and I, you know, shoot my little LG. I mean, There's so many pictures that you see in this collection where you can actually see me holding the camera. I mean, holding my phone. That's the black thing in my hand. <laughs> Uh, let's see. There's, there's like now the more just came up, but uh, let me see. I'm going to go down from the bottom. Uh, Martha, we've known each other for four to five decades. Your images warm up the sub-zero temps. <laughs> Who is this? Uh, Cindy, and she's in Colorado. Okay. Oh, this is Matt. This is Matt's wife. Hi, Matt's wife. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That's so cool. Uh, Jill says, "I love it." Uh, Jill and Larissa, Cindy. Yep, that's that's Austin, Texas. Love okay. it. Uh, fascinating. I've had to disassemble my dark room and haven't ventured into digital much, but your work is inspiring. Uh, Via Moore says, "Are these cropped?" No, I think they're all except for the well, very are, first one was. Yeah. Was, no, no, was no. I mean, they're 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 all they're all pretty much they're not cropped. These are this is the image. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, they're striking. I paint on my photos. Uh, somebody said, "No, oh, there's more coming in." All right, I'm going to stop here. I think people liked your work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Peter, did you uh, get uh, yourself together, or should I? Uh, uh, while while you're uh, trying again, let me say I have to unshare. All right, no, I there's no I'm uh, unable to. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, all right. Just, so I get um, symbols oh. with exclamation points. I don't get to share. Right, I, and I, I apologize. I really. Uh, Jill is uh, waving at you, I think. Jill, Jill Montgomery is waving at you. Hi, Jill. I don't see her. Wait. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So I'm going to do share screen. And unfortunately, oh. I did not get the chance to uh, sort through these. So uh, why is that showing? Me? Oh, there it is. No, that's. All right. Let's try this. No, that's not it. Wow. Okay. Oh, that's the one up in the corner, though. Oh. I don't see a picture. That's so funny. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. I have to stop sharing. Sure. Okay. So, so, Peter, let me just come in here and say yes. Go ahead. We would love to see Peter's work on another occasion at Artist Talk, uh, and I will work with you or Lawrence, whatever, to make that happen. Hopefully, a little later this year, because I see well. some of your work offline and uh, loved it. I think Thank I might you. have it now. There it is. Well, we're anything? probably running out of time, though, right? No, <laughs> that was okay. So Do you see this some... is your work, Lawrence? Yeah. Uh, no, well, that's my picture. Yeah, oh, this is yours. Okay. But th this was included as a digression after I got. Oh, really? <laughs> it's the first one that came up. What can I say? I didn't. I, I didn't. I wasn't in anticipation that I actually need to do this. I was sure you're going to get it because you know you yeah, you're, no, I, you're, I, you seem much more serious and together than me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. Again, uh, Doug, you want to keep yeah, Doug, going you want, you want, you want to tell it again another time. What time is it? Yeah. So so Peter, why don't you email me, contact me, and uh, or I'll contact you. And we'll do our best to work you in somewhere later in the year. That would be great. I appreciate yeah. it. And I apologize for not um, knowing what the nature of the problem is. So yeah, it's we do. I, I'm doing Zooms three, four, five times a week. I don't think I've ever done one where there wasn't a problem. And looking on the bright side, I've also done uh, was it the Microsoft one and the Skype one and the uh, probably five other of these. And this is definitely the most stable. So. It's just what we have to live with. But I'm just flicking through these. There are the images. There are, yeah. Which.
This was my favorite one, by the way, <laughs> as we're going by. <laughs> Why can't we just watch them now? Well, we are. Yeah, we are. And I think we're, there aren't that many. So. Okay. so is Peter commenting on any of them? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> we'll, we'll do this again. And we'll get, get more of your stuff, too. What kind of camera I, are these photographed with? Uh, either a, a, a Canon G12 or a iPhone 12 mini. The, the G12 is a great camera. And so, is, so is, I mean, I, I, I have, yeah, you know, I have so much to talk about with, with cameras. Uh, I'll just, let's see what if I can make it quick. Well, let me see the crappy camera show, which we originated at, at Soho Photo like 20 something years ago, uh, which is, involves using crappy cameras as the name implies for those who don't know what that, that, that might be. Uh, an example is the, it's, uh, the Holga and the, what's the other one, the Diana, which are like $20 cameras that are way overpriced. And uh, you stick film in them and you wind up getting this, these uh, Jimmy things. And the, the reason uh, that came up, I mean, it's a much longer story, is that uh, the most common question asked when in a photo gallery and having the work on the, on the walls is, what, I love your pictures, what camera do you use? It's like, oh, I love uh, Hemingway. What typewriter did he use? As if that would actually matter at all. And um, the fact is I have, I don't know, 10, 20, $30,000 worth of cameras and I use my phone most of the time. <laughs> I think, I mean, the, the best camera in the world is the one you have with you. And uh, there are other cameras I absolutely adore, including the, the, the G series of the, of the Canons. They're, they're fabulous. And uh, Amy was talking about her uh, 5, uh, 5D three or four as being uh, old and I'm still using the 5D one and it's a fine camera. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. It's not the camera. It's the person holding the camera that makes the art. It's it's not the not the brush. It's the person that's using the brush that makes the art. So Lawrence, we are tossing it back to you, Doug. Thank you. We're, we're getting very close to ninety minutes. So what I want to say first of all is to thank you, Lawrence, for putting this together and moderating it, and to thank Peter, although it was a little you know short short changed. Uh, Amy DeRosha, Martha Lipton. I'd also like to thank ATUA interns and volunteers, including Marona Stratton and Natalia Dragnea, handling Zoom and YouTube, Kristen Eichenberg, who helps me with programming, Emily Villarreal and Catherine Carrillo, who handle the website and social media, Abby Herman, who handles archival matters, Matt Molina, who is our videographer for physical events, and our entire programming committee and intrepid board of directors. Our next event happens on February 28th, which Lawrence is also organizing and moderating. Uh, see our website for full details. And thank you all for joining us tonight. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. And thank you, Amy, Martha, and Peter. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for coming. <laughs>